morning, Michelle Saxman here, and ready to share with you some time with Jesus Calling by Sarah Young on September the 30th. And this to me, there's a bunch of contrast in here, the truths of the kingdom that bring us into his life, his light, his love, his forever promise of his presence. And then it is the contrast into the lies of the culture, the things that pull us into the past, into regret and remorse, and the things that drag us striving into the future with worry and anticipation. And our Heavenly Father says, enjoy me in the present tent, in the present tense. That is a, I guess, a really a profound truth. The most important fact of your existence is that I am perpetually present. I am forever with you. I am with you. I am within you. I am as close as the next breath within your lungs, the air on your skin. He is with us. It is our spiritual being that is made in his image and likeness. And it is absolutely tied and tethered to our creator and our savior. And then it is to talk about our energy. Our energy is our greatest resource. And if we go striving into the future, I heard someone say, that's when we're trying to outpace God. And you know that feeling of striving when it, like internally, that what it does to kind of the nuts in our belly and the clenching in our jaw and the striving and the planning and the anticipation. And the thing is, we're not called to outpace our Heavenly Father, but we do need to have the car in drive. It cannot be in park. Our Heavenly Father is asking us to be in motion but not to plan too far into the future or worry about things of the past. So the readings for today, uh, the, the other thing, the to quick takeaway, and I mentioned it the other day, the tense living. Are you living in the past tense? Are you living in the future tense? Because we are called to live in the present tense with our Creator and Savior. The readings for today, therefore, Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And acknowledging our Heavenly Father, our future is in His hands, and He releases it to us in the amount with which He knows we can handle day by day, moment by moment. Then the next reading is John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And to me, this is really about that lifeline in quadrant living, the one that goes, um, I guess it's in the number line, the positive and negative, and we are called to live above the lifeline. As long as we are believing the lies of the culture, we will remain in the grave with the thief who comes to steal kill and destroy. But he says, come above that lifeline. Seek the abundance of this day. Seek the bounty, the banquet I have planned for you. The final reading is James chapter 4, verse 13 through 15. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this city or that city. Spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is this life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. And that is a gift, a reminder that we are just a mere mist. Our life is precious. And if you are living in the United States, I know that our community wraps all the way around this world, this amazing fallen, fractured planet. And we have so many things going on in Europe and um, in, uh, I guess, in, uh, in Russia and in the Ukraine and protests in, in Iran and Germany problems with energy and banking systems. And then in the United States, this magnificent storm of Ian and the wrath of that storm. But we are called to live above the lifeline. Our life is a precious gift that we are invited to enjoy each and every day abundantly, not as the culture defines abundance, not as the culture defines so many things, but to seek his powerful presence and the fruits of the spirit and acknowledge the beauty of his creation, even in the midst of all this chaos, he is inviting us to his powerful presence of peace. 
Um, this is, we are wrapping up the month of September. So I'll go back to that theme. And that was John chapter eight, verse 12. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And just his forever promise, the powerful presence. We are called and invited into the light, out of the darkness, out of the grave, into the light. Regardless of the external circumstances, we can seek that internal peace. So I want to just thank you so much for joining us in the month of uh, September. And you guys, October 1st will be one year of me consistently posting each and every day. And I am going to be spending some time kind of recapping the transformation that I know that I have gone through, things that our Heavenly Father that has shown me that I truly believe are beyond the kind of my physical realm, but I opened myself up to transformation and our Heavenly Father absolutely did not disappoint. If you know that you've been transformed this year, post a comment down below. People in this community have been following me actually for years and have seen and noticed and commented in the changes and the growth in my faith and how God is working with and within and through me. So thank you so much for joining me in this month of September. And I do look forward to sharing October. If you've not already subscribed, I certainly invite you to give it a thumbs up, like, share. Thank you. Stay connected to the vine. Protect the crown. Protect your thought life. Know who you are. Know whose you are. You are worthy.